Meniscal tears are among the most common joint lesions at the knee. They are quite widespread in sportsmen population, above all in sports of impact and pivoting of the knee, for example football, basketball and other sports requiring this kind of movement. Referring to meniscal lesions, it is important to say how the treatment is not always the same, just because in some cases, depending from the characteristics of the lesions, the best treatment would be conservatory, no, operative, and in other cases, it would be necessary to proceed with an arthroscopy in order to assess mm -hmm. the characteristics and the features of the lesion and to decide if to treat it by repair with a suture or by partial meniscectomy, removing a uh, piece of the torn meniscus. And it's about this focus that we'll talk today. Good morning, I'm Stefano Teramo and this is Orthostrike. The knee, what a charming jar. From a bony point of view, it's constituted by the tibia that goes in contact proximally with the fibula at the navel of the tibio fibular proximal joint. And then, just above the tibia, we've got the lateral and medial meniscus. The medial meniscus is more C-shaped, while the lateral is more O-shaped. Two meniscus are placed just between tibia and femur. Then, laterally, we have the two lateral collateral ligaments, the medial one and the lateral one, that stabilize the joint from a varovalgus point of view. Then, centrally, in the Central pivot, we have the anterior crochet ligament and the posterior crochet ligament that, as their name says, have a cross shaped conformation. Then, the cartilage surface that covers, as in all the joint, both femoral and tibia, and the patella too, that goes to constitute the patellofemoral joint on the anterior aspect of the knee. That's really a fascinating anatomy. In order to fully understand the algorithm that we orthopedic surgeons follow when decide if to treat surgically or conservatively a meniscal lesion, it's important to know the anatomic features of this region of the knee. It's important in order to understand another basic aspect that is why sometimes in the operative room we decide to treat the lesion by removing the torn place with a partial meniscectomy and why in other occasions we decide to fix that by repair with suture. It happens because both the medial and the lateral meniscus present in their anatomy and above all in their vascular eroration a peculiar distribution that makes not the same any lesion than the other and we have got to analyze the specific case patient by patient. What happens due to the peculiar vascular anatomy of the meniscus? As we see in this scheme, meniscus blood supply is due to the peripheral blood vessel we have at the meniscal capsular union. From these blood vessels, we see that start some thinner and smaller collateral roots that go interdigitating and penetrating in the meniscal tissue from periphery to central zone. The blood supply provided by these small vessels goes progressively decreasing from the periphery to the central part of the meniscus. And uh, the implication of this is that we have stronger blood supply on the red zone. There is how we call the most peripheral part of the meniscus due to his higher blood supply. By the other side, we call what zone the most central part of the meniscus due to its poor vascularization. And then, between these two zones, the most peripheral, the red one, and the most central, the white one, we have an intermediate region we call red-white zone. These vascular anatomy features are really crucial because the more blood supply we have, and more oxygen and nutrients supply we'll have at this region of the meniscus, and so, Consequently, a better healing capacity from the meniscal tear to heal in case of a suture. And this is why a lesion that's located in the peripheral part of the meniscus in the red zone has a better healing capacity and is most likely good prognostic in case of suture than a lesion that is located in the white zone. The etiology it is to the origin of the meniscal lesions to be degenerative or traumatic. 
Degenerative tears are most common in older patients that with the advance of the age most likely go towards a degeneration of the articular tissues and a destructuration of the meniscus. It sometimes may provoke some mechanical symptomatology, but most of cases are treated conservatively. There is not frequently a mechanical symptomatology requiring this surgical treatment, and it's related with the prolinear degenerative background in uh, view of uh, future osteoarthritic degenerative causes. What is more interesting to analyze now is the etiology of the traumatic meniscal tears. Traumatic meniscal tears are more common in a younger population between 20 and 45 years, above all in people practicing sports requiring impact and uh, torsional pivoting motion of the knee. Torsional motion of the knee is a critical aspect we've got to analyze because this rotational movement is the one that may provoke, most likely, uh, overcharge and uh, impairment of the meniscus with finally a possible tear and uh, destructuration of the meniscal tissue. As we said, the critical aspect to consider is the morphology, the anatomy of the lesion we have in the meniscus. On the first image on the left, we see a median meniscus in good health, an intact median meniscus. Then, on the other image, we see a small radial tear on the body of the medial meniscus. This tear is a tear that has a transversal projection on the structure of the meniscus and really doesn't origin in the most of cases any mechanical consequences or mechanical symptomatology due to its relative stability from a mechanical point of view. Different is the situation in case of a longitudinal tear, as we see in this case, that uh, may provoke an instability of a wide portion of meniscus. Sometimes we call this kind of lesion, both in the red zone or in this case in the white zone, backed handle lesion due to their tendency to dislocate in the joint and provoke an intense mechanical symptomatology. The first image in the red zone is most likely treated by suture because, as we said before, there is a good vascular supply in this zone. The same doesn't happen in the white zone. In this case of lesion, will be difficult to proceed with the suture and will have to assess the quality of the meniscus by arthroscopy in order to decide if it's worth to try repair or will go to partial meniscectomy in order to eliminate the mechanical blocking and symptomatology for the patient. Then, from a morphological point of view, we could see a degenerative tear of the meniscus like this, or in some case, a dislocation of just a small flap, a small portion, in stable portion in white zone, like in this case, and it's a lesion that for its location and morphology is most likely treated by partial meniscectomy. What's important to take in account is to Above all, in the last years, there is a widespread opinion in the scientific international community about the necessity to look for saving the meniscus. The attempt to spare as much meniscus as we can and to avoid, when possible, partial meniscectomy and to try to uh, reduce the lesion and to fix it by repair and suture or, when possible, to avoid surgical treatment and to proceed with a conservative treatment. The conservative treatment of a meniscal tear is made up by rehabilitation sessions and a patient plan of recovery during some months made up by physiotherapy and a plan of muscle strengthening that uh, focus above all on the quadriceps with a special attention to its vastus medialis or vastus lateralis components, depending from the meniscus affected, or if it's the medial one or the lateral one. Then it's crucial a uh, proprioceptive work with physiotherapists in order to improve the stability of the knee and the tolerance, the clinical tolerance from the patients in order to achieve a good 
functional outcome and the satisfactory tolerance of the meniscal tear by the knee of the patient. But unfortunately, it's not always possible. It's possible just when there is a meniscal tear that's not unstable from a mechanical point of view or that doesn't locate in a large zone of the joint. When we have a displaced or unstable lesion of the meniscus, unfortunate pronostic of the conservative treatment is poor and we normally suggest to proceed with an arthroscopy. Arthroscopic treatment, as we'll see in the next videos, could be made up by two basic options that are partial meniscectomy, it has to remove the torn part of the meniscus, or repair suture of the meniscus. Unfortunately, the suture, as we said before, is possible just in some cases when the location of the lesion is positive for repair due to the blood supply above all in the red zone and red white zone, whilst in the white zone it's more difficult to decide to make suture because of this poor diagnostic and poor healing response. Another feature we have to consider in order to decide is the structure of the lesion because a pediculate central irregular lesion could most likely treated by partial meniscectomy because it's normally difficult healing the response to the suture. And then we'll have to assess the quality of the tissues, of the meniscal tissue, by an arthroscopic exploration is normally decided directly in operative room by an astroscopic assessment of the quality of the tissues and of the characteristics of the lesion. But it is another topic and we'll focus on that in the next videos of OrthoStrike. Thank you very much for your kind attention. See you in the next videos of OrthoStrike where we'll face the matter of the surgical treatment of meniscal lesions. And let me remember to who could be interested that I'm available for online visit on my website www.stefanoteramo.com or by the uh, web portal of Doctoralia www.doctoralia.es. Thank you very much and see you soon. Fly so far we too